can just come nearer. You have to close the door. Can you please close the door? Huh? No, no, no. Okay, can you just check your mobiles, okay? One second. I show you example, okay? So if you continue with our master class, I have great privilege to introduce you. Great Israeli violinist, pedagogue, friend, for many years, Keshet Elon faculty member, Shmuel Ashkenazi.
Very well. You really play very well. I enjoyed a lot of it. Um, there are three things that I would like to address today. Uh, one is um, vibrating with the bow. Uh, I don't think you ever do. So when you have things like you uh, remind me of an ice skater. You know when you ice skate, yeah, I wish that you reminded me of a trampoline artist. Uh, so that because if you vibrate with the left hand, it's too fast and it's hysterical. It's just too much. Mm -hmm. So I think you should vibrate with the bow. Mm -hmm. You see, you can do it either with these two fingers, mm -hmm. with the bow, or with the pronation, or both. I don't care how you do it, but mm -hmm. imagine your bow is a trampoline, mm -hmm. and so you, you squeeze and you release. No, 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 you do. No, no. It's like this. You do, you do. I recommend. Yeah. Yes, and, yes. And, and the other thing that I recommend <coughs> is every time the harmony changes, vibrate one note. Mm -hmm. The whole thing sounds warmer. If you do... Then... You understand? So get in the habit of articulating with pressure and release. Mm -hmm. And again, you can do it either this way you see? Or this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And first note vibrates. No, no. You do. Yeah. No, I, I see your head moving. But I'm more concerned with your voice. No. So all the time, this should look like this. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a little better. And then vibrate the first note. That's what. Yeah. So try to get uh, comfortable with it. Yes, and that's very good for, uh, for instance. So it's again, it's the speed that is too fast to vibrate with the left hand. You need to. You understand? Yes. Okay. So that's one issue. And along the, the same lines, uh, you can use the same technique when you have duplets. And duplets mean that the second note is short. And that makes it easier to shift during the rest. that otherwise he can write he can write that but if he writes uh, duplets like in the Mozart concerto so and again you can do it either by pressing or releasing or by pronating or do both And, and 
and the second note will be short. Then you shift during the rest. Yes. And that brings me to the third thing that I would like to address, and that's intonation. Um, you play nearly always perfect. It's not good enough. I wish that you played perfectly, and then if you make mistakes, it's okay. But you all the time play very slightly out of tune. So I would like to address that a little bit. Um, in my opinion, uh, there is a double standard for intonation. You know what a double standard means? No. Um, the, in certain cultures, in certain cultures, not in our culture, but in certain cultures, it's okay for a man to have many girlfriends, but it's not okay for the woman to have many boyfriends. That's a double standard and it's terrible. Uh, it's not right. In this country, a uh, hundred years ago, there was one standard for white people, another standard for black people. That was terrible. But for intonation, I think it's good for us to acknowledge that there is a double standard. There should be a double standard. One standard is when you play slow accompanied, and another standard when you play a single voice, that means unaccompanied, or fast. So when you play stuff like... <laughs> You are kind of fast, but you are alone. There is no orchestra, there is no accompaniment. And in which case, I recommend that you play what is called expressive intonation, which means that the half steps are very small and the whole steps are a tiny bit big. Root and fifth of the chord needs to be perfect. Every other note has a polarity. You understand? Polarity? Polarity means it leans towards. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, <laughs> the half step's very, very close. Those, this is the polarity. So, <laughs> I want you to understand well. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. So, so the whole step's a tiny bit big, the half step's very small, except half steps that are called by the same name, such as F, F sharp, B, B flat. For instance, so this is small, this is very big. You, you see? If you're alone, if you're accompanied, it's a different standard. Yeah, and I think that if you apply this, your intonation will improve overnight. It's not bad, and that's why it's going to be difficult for you to improve. If it was terrible, it's very easy to improve. But it's very good, but it's not perfect. So try. Try slowly. like that it would be perfect and the faster it is the more you need to do that because all the time there is a little bit out of tune and so you can you know try to play expressive intonation that means half steps very very small and whole steps a little bit big the reason for that is that you have big half steps but if you play only big whole steps you get away from the open strings and from the tonal center. Yeah. You understand? So, so do try uh, to apply that, and I think your intonation will be better immediately. OK? OK. Um, as far as the, the piece is concerned, I, I feel that many times you play small. Uh, that does not mean soft, because you can play big and soft but you play small, and the reason for it, I think, is that your bow is quite far from the bridge, 
and you turn the ball quite a lot. So I recommend that you slightly turn it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot more cushion in the sound and just maybe a, a half a millimeter closer to the bridge. You know, it sounds small. Uh, if you if you let the strings ring, it sounds big. If you do, it sounds small. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let the strings ring. Yeah. And and I wish that you learn the the virtue of releasing. You almost never release the pressure of the bow. Mm -hmm. So. You see that the stick of my bow goes in and out. Yeah. Uh, at the very beginning, you inherit from the orchestra. So you want to continue this phrasing even though he didn't write. Yeah? And uh, that brings me to one more issue, and that is the vibrato of your fourth finger. Uh, I wish that the fourth finger you vibrate from here. You see, the whole thing moves. The rest, no. But because, you know, when, when, when God created mankind, he had no idea that he will play the violin, otherwise he doesn't give us such a small, terrible finger. Uh, you know, so to compensate for it, try to vibrate with the whole arm for the fourth finger. No, it means, it means this is stiff and you move only from here. So the exercise can be, you know, the whole thing move. Right, right. And then you nail it and continue the motion. Yes. That's better, yeah. Yeah. Every other finger I recommend to vibrate from the wrist, but uh, the fourth finger I think that you should, uh, you should vibrate for the, with the whole arm. Uh, it takes getting used to, but I think that once, I'm sorry. I think that once you get used to it, it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. And I, I work very, very hard with my students to strengthen the fourth finger and make it very, very expressive. And then I tell them to use the third finger because it's better. No matter how good you improve your fourth finger, the third finger is better. But many times, like Mendelssohn, mm, you are forced to play with the fourth finger. Uh, you know, you play uh, Schoenberg for Klaus Nach, it's impossible to avoid. You know, there are many, many pieces where you can't avoid it. If you can avoid it, third finger will always be better. No matter how good your fourth finger is, your third finger is better. It's just the way you were created. But you, you sometimes cannot, you know. Uh, you, you know, so then I recommend that you vibrate from here. Uh, you, you vibrated from here and it was poor. Mm -hmm. I mean, poor, the vibrato was poor for that finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Sorry. Yes? We have to stop? Switch? Oh, two more minutes? One more minute, okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, uh, you know, uh, as far as the concerto goes, again, I do recommend that you try to play it as metronomic as possible. Not the second movement and not the last movement, but the first movement is extremely strict. Uh, it's not necessary to do so many. Yeah. And the development, the G minor section, I think you should play it as fast as you can stand it. This. Because the, the orchestra has a, and it's such a totally different tempo that it just doesn't hold together. And Beethoven could have written something with you or nothing. And so, yes, you shouldn't sacrifice expression. It should be extremely beautiful, but not slow. Not slow. 
and then you do things like, uh, and you wait. I think you should continue. All the time I think you should continue and, and play metronomic. It's a very, very great movement. And uh, Okay, I'm supposed to stop. Thanks, Ron. Uh, okay.
Very beautiful. Very beautiful. I like very much what you do. Um, the issue that I think is weak in your playing is the control of your vibrato. You have a very beautiful sound when you vibrate. It's not so beautiful when you don't vibrate. Mm -hmm. And many times I feel that your, your vibrato is like a wild animal. Does what it pleases. It's wild. Uh, and I wish that you didn't vibrate only on purpose. But many times I cannot see the purpose in when you don't vibrate. And so maybe it will help you if you look in the mirror at what your vibrato does, and then you will see what I hear. There are many, many dead notes, what we call dead notes. They just don't vibrate, and it doesn't seem to have a musical purpose. So I really urge you to fix it. Okay. Uh, many times it's the same note, and you don't, you know, you vibrate, and you don't vibrate, and you do vibrate, and you don't vibrate, and yeah. There are a few places where it's chronic, and that is when you, you have a short note. It's not convenient, but it's necessary. Um, or before and after you shift, you, you often don't vibrate. It's not convenient, I understand, but the music shouldn't suffer. And because you have a beautiful sound when you vibrate, it makes it uglier, even uglier when you don't vibrate because the, the, the contrast is too big. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So that's one issue. Uh, and you have a beautiful vibrato. It's just lazy or it's uh, unmusical or I don't know how to call it. It's, uh, it's just not not musical. Uh, many times you have an appoggiatura that is a very expressive note and you just don't vibrate it. So, uh, yeah, and in my opinion, the best teacher in the world is when you are offended. If it bothers you, you will fix it. Uh, if it doesn't bother you, the teacher can scream and yell and repeat. It's not going to help. You will do it for the teacher. And you should do it for the music. You understand? Yeah. Um, the other issue that I find technically that you need to improve or else it will get worse is that you created a magnet at the tip of your bow and when it comes there, it pulls. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so do try. If you are here and the music doesn't require more bow, change the bow here. Don't go to the tip. If you want to go to the tip, go properly to the tip. So, uh, as you tend to do, yeah. Again, if you look in the mirror, you can see it, and then maybe it will bother you. So. It's not very severe, but it's going to get worse. My experience with students and young people is that it gets worse. This is a habit that really, uh, it's one thing that uh, if you improve it, it's not good enough. You've got to stop it. You just have to stop this pulling, pulling of the bow. Okay? You don't do too much portamento, but you do do it uh, very, very, yeah. You increase the speed of the bow artificially at the tip. Not so bad at the frog, which is much more difficult, but you do it quite well. But at the tip, there is, there is uh, that. So if the music doesn't need any more bow, don't go to the tip. Okay. Yeah. If you want to go to the tip, that way, but not. Yeah. OK, you understand? OK. Um, and you play very well in tune most of the time. Double stops, I think you need to improve. But otherwise, you really play very well in tune. And that's very important for you. And I don't want to take it away. That's really great. But I wish that you improve your vibrato and, and this habit. Uh, as far as the sound production, again, I told your colleague, if you just move the bow at half a millimeter closer to the bridge, you will have a, a much bigger sound.
you know, very often I see you play uh, close to the fingerboard. Just move it a little bit toward the, the contact point, a little bit closer. <laughs> If you, if you are here, it's very good for, if you have, uh, you know, when you have things that are very intimate or very fluffy, that's fine. You don't always have to play here, but... Here, not here. Mm -hmm. You know, so move uh, one millimeter uh, towards, towards the bridge, yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise I, I like very much what you do. Why don't you start again? Yeah. At the beginning, maybe you shouldn't use so much pedal. Okay. Yeah, we should hear la ta 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 ta. in my opinion, not musical. It's musical. And that's what you do with a bow, and that's what you do with your face and your body. But what you do with your face and body, we cannot hear. Only what you do... You understand? Yeah. yeah. change the bow after legato, give accents. You do. So the fastest at the beginning of the note. You do. to do better. Ah. No vibrato. Yes. Get to the tip. Get there properly. Yeah. And then it didn't vibrate.
careful. No, no. And now I recommend to try to start down bow. So that up bow. You're going to a weak part of the bow. severe, but it's going to get severe. Much better. No, no, if you can, at least buy with the first note. At least one note. If you can drive with all of them, even better. too slow and a little bit boring. If you can move it a little bit. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Then mm. you 
you come to this area, this magnet that you created pulls the bow. liar out of me. I complimented you for the great intonation, but now you're not saying so well in tune. <laughs> One more time. Yes. I recommend that you change the speed of your bow all the time. Monotonous. You understand? If the music goes, increase the speed of the bow. If the music comes, decrease. No. Already I suggest that you slow down the bow. Then. Do you understand? If the music goes, increase the speed of the bow. But here it comes. It comes from the downbeat. So you slow down. out of tune, mm -hmm. really out of tune. So you need to fix it mm -hmm. and maybe consider this fingering. Yeah, just consider it. Yeah. It's not going to help the intonation, but this uh, is not really very good.
and and change the speed of your go. You're still doing it. You don't hear that you do it, huh? You do. Do accents. Just like the piano, when he plays, every note has an accent. Good. You're not in tune now, it's a little bit sharp.